everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today we are going to be talking about my new makeup releases video and this is going to be the first time I'm doing this in 2022 and that's because I needed some time to regroup and sort of rethink how I wanted to film this video because I was doing this video already every single month for a while and I just got a little bit tired with just ranting about all things I wasn't going to get. So today we are going to do a bottom five and a top five of the new makeup releases that I have been, that I've seen announced, so I'm no longer going to attempt to talk about as much as possible. I'm going to make it very sort of short and curated. Then I'm also going to be showing you what I actually bought in January, and I'm going to be talking to you about some brands that I hope to try in 2022. So let's just get to the video. Welcome if you're new here, welcome if you're a returning visitor, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to click on another one of my videos. Like I mentioned, we are doing new makeup releases, and in case you don't know anything about this channel, my name is Maika, I live in the Netherlands, I love doing eyeshadow palette content, that's my main jam, I love reviewing Essence and Catrice content as well, and I like to get the use out of my products. So I'm not necessarily a review channel, so to say, but I like to just talk about things that worked or didn't uh, and why and really try things. I don't necessarily project pan, but I definitely like to stay with products for a longer amount of time before I really make up my mind about them. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, new makeup releases today. Like I mentioned, it took me some time to regroup and rethink what I wanted to do with this video because I had started to feel completely overwhelmed and not just with makeup releases, but kind of with life in general. So I think it all went nicely hand in hand. And I just wanted to sort of reformat this video to make it more manageable about myself and to really only talk about the things that really stand out to me. So not attempting to talk about everything like I was doing before, like everything that sort of made me go like, ooh, I kind of put into the video. I very often I had to even cut things because I was feeling it took the flow out of the video or whatever. So that's why I'm, I'm deciding to go with a top five, but also a bottom five, because I know a lot of people like it if I give my unpopular opinions about some products as well. Um, so the top five are products that I know I'm going to put on a wish list or that maybe I've already bought. And the bottom five is going to be things that, yes, these things are good. I think I might like these, but these are wishlist material um, and some of them, like I've also decided to no longer go over like the obvious things like every single ColourPop release that comes out or Too Faced that really hasn't really stood out to me for a while. Juvia's Place is another brand that I used to really like and get very excited for, but that's also a brand where I like look at their new releases and I'm like, okay. So there are going to be brands that I think by default aren't even really going to get a mention unless they really do something that stands out to me. Um, so yeah, that's sort of where I'm coming from with this video today. So let me talk to you about my top five and bottom five first. And I think, just for the sake of the video, we're going to start off with my bottom five and then do the top five. So here we go. So bottom five, and the first product I wanted to mention is the new release from Natasha Denona. This is her mini Biba palette, and she also did a mini crush, I think, for Valentine's Day. And these look lovely, <sighs> but I, I don't need these. I really, really don't. Like, I get why she does them, because I think they're very popular releases for her brand, but they're just very pink-toned, and I just actually ranked all of my rosy and mauve toned eyeshadow palettes and one of the things I told you then is that I don't love a warm toned pink on myself all that much. It can make me look sort of like I've got pink eye going on, like I'm like really tired or sick. It can make my eyes look very red uh, because it just clashes too much with my skin tone and I feel that both the Mini Biba and the Mini Crush are far too warm toned for what I want out of a rosy tone palette. Maybe the crush could still work, but with this kind of price point, I mean, they're 25 euros each. I don't think it's worth it for me to even try them. Like I have my mini retro and I have my mini love and I really, really like those, but these two releases didn't really spark my interest. Now, another thing that totally didn't spark my interest, but a brand that I also wanted to make sure I mentioned in the video 
is BH Cosmetics. They announced a new launch. They keep doing the Zodiac thing, apparently, uh, where they have like a new monthly palette called, you know, according to the Zodiac, called the Aquarius. Uh, so they have another Zodiac collection. Like, didn't we already have one of those like three years ago? Um, and last year we had the Birthstone collection. So they seem to be doing the same thing over and over again. But of course, in the past week or so, it's been announced that BH Cosmetics has filed for bankruptcy. And I think that there is no surprise there, really. If you look at what some of the things that they have been releasing, the brand can be quite inconsistent in terms of quality, and they are, like a ColourPop, like a Makeup Revolution, a brand that releases a lot. So especially if you're a regular consumer and you're not that tied in, with what's already being released, I think it can be a very overwhelming brand to take a look at and decide what you might wanna buy. Factor in that BH Cosmetics is very much an online only brand that really doesn't, I don't know, it's just not widely available. Like if I wanna shop from them, I need to go through the German website. Like they're, they don't, they're not even available in my country. So I think that that's another reason why they, you know, they just can't keep profits up. Um, and I think it's sort of because they're trying to join this like oversaturated market that is just doing and regurgitating the same thing over and over again. So why that doesn't go for other brands, I think that they've just taken a couple of bad decisions in the past couple of years where they decided to do like a full year of a certain collection and then that collection just didn't do very well, for instance. So I think that with this for sort of like Zodiac birthstone idea, I mean, it's very collectible. I think people very much like that, but if you're not giving us color stories that we like, and if you know your original Zodiac collection already didn't do very well, I mean, the Zodiac palette did very well, like the big one, but then they did little ones every single month for each Zodiac. And I don't think those did very well because a lot of those I think ended up popping up in sales. Um, so I think they just ended up with a lot of like dead stock that they could no longer get rid of. And of course, with the entire pandemic, I think that really took a hit on their operation as well. So. Uh, apparently um, it's for sale. You can buy their IPs, you can buy like the branding and stuff. And so maybe the brand can still continue uh, onwards. We don't know yet at this point, I think, but they did file for bankruptcy. So it could very well be that BH Cosmetics is going to be gone very soon, which would be sad because they did a couple of really nice palettes that I do very much enjoy. Now the brand that I said I wasn't going to mention all that much anymore is ColourPop, but then they did the Glow Getter, Glow Getter uh, collection with a palette that looks like Sprinkle of Magic and Off Quartz went and had a baby. Um, and that's exactly what I wanna do with my Off Quartz and my Sprinkle of Magic, the Tinkerbell palette that they did over the summertime. Like I wanna fuse those two palettes together because I like some of the brown tones in the Sprinkle of Magic uh, or in the Off Chords better than the pinky tones in the Sprinkle of Magic. And then there are a couple of greens in the Sprinkle of Magic that I don't really love, but I wanna replace it with like some of the cool tone shimmers. And then I think you get something that can be quite similar to this, which is, that's why I wanted to mention this. So this is not something I'm going to be getting. This is not on a wish list. Um, because I feel that ColourPop is just, again, repeating itself. Um, again, not something I'm currently keeping up with. I think apart from this, I've seen like five other launches from them. Like I've, I just saw a Valentine's collection and I saw some other things and I was like, oh no, it's even worse than in 2021. So no, ColourPop, we're definitely skipping. I feel I can make this color story with some of the ColourPop palettes I already own. So we're not gonna do that. And then this is definitely a, a release that I know people want me to talk about, which is an Urban Decay re release. This was announced, I think I saw this popping up last night. This is the Wild Greens eyeshadow palette. And I looked at this and I was like, no, <laughs> just no. You know, I love Urban Decay. Actually, I'm wearing one of their palettes on my eyes today. And so many people hate it on this palette because it's the Naked Cyber. This is the first time I've used it and I have to say, I quite like it. 
like the peachy tone. I used one of the lighter peachy tones in the crease and it pulled quite rosy on me. Like it had a cooler undertone and it turned quite pinky. So it ended up looking a lot better than I thought it was going to be. And I used a couple of those really fun shimmers that it has in there. And while not as intense as some of my Cleona duochromes and multi-chromes, I think that from like an everyday consumer perspective, this can still work. But if I look at this new palette, I appreciate the greens in this palette, but it's not green enough for me. And then it's called the wild greens. And I'm like, I don't think it's that wild of a palette, Urban Decay. Um, again, with sort of like the peachy warm tones that they've put together, there seems to be like a nice coppery kind of shade in here as well. That can be pretty. Um, but I think I'm not entirely sure. Like if I look at the swatches of this, I like it so much better than in the pan. So maybe if I were to see this in real life, I might be able to, uh, you know, it might be able to interest me if I were to swatch it on my own skin tone. Because if I look at the swatches on a light skin tone, it seems to have these really light, like sagey greens like you get in the mini retro. That appeals to me. However, if I look at it in the pan, I don't really see that same sort of lightness. It seems to be more bright. And to me, the way this color story looks, it looks a lot like the Sprinkle of Magic Tinkerbell palette from ColourPop that I already mentioned. Um, it seems to be styled in the same way as the Prince palettes that they did in the springtime. And I'm just like, I'm not sure if this is going to save your skin, Urban Decay, because also Urban Decay, like BH Cosmetics, seems to be struggling, especially here. Um, their stock has been really, really terrible ever since the, like, summertime. Um, we haven't been getting certain releases, or at least not on time. And, uh, also, like, part of the Urban Decay, like, uh, like, stand in store seems to only be filled, like, for a third. Like, it's... And they closed down their official website here as well, so I think... Urban Decay is going to be a brand that is going to be disappearing in certain markets uh, because they seem to be struggling. However, um, another thing you should know about my love affair with Urban Decay, I really like their quality because it's usually very easy to use if you want to do just a really quick basic look. Um, a lot of people are very much disappointed with Urban Decay for their lack of intense shimmers or like the, the formula isn't very now and I get where people are coming from but I think that we should all bear in mind that the current Urban Decay isn't the Urban Decay of like 10-15 years ago. Um, they were bought up by L'Oreal for, you know, the fact that they had a very popular naked palette line. That's what sold the brand to... Uh, L'Oreal and L'Oreal as a mother company is just pushing this brand into a very different direction than where it used to be and I think that that's something that a lot of people tend to forget. Um, Urban Decay no longer caters to makeup enthusiasts. Urban Decay caters to regular consumers, your aunties, your, your you know, not necessarily the people who wear a full beat of makeup. That's not who they cater to. Um, so please don't go looking for that and say that this palette is going to be bad quality. If the, you know, formulation seems a bit sheer, that's actually what the brand has been pushing for like the past five or six years now. And I think that's definitely due to the fact that they were bought by L'Oreal. I think in like 2014 or 15, like a while ago, they were bought by L'Oreal. So they know, no long, they're no longer an independent brand. They no longer have full say in what they're doing and whatever they do needs to sell. It, they need to push units to as wide of an audience as possible. Um, and you don't do that with very intense shimmers. So um, I like this. I don't need it. I think I have other things in my collection that I would like more. If this was styled like a naked palette, I might have been more excited for it because I like collecting those. But this... I don't really see it really going with what I want. So lastly, my bottom five is the Nomad Cosmetics Whistler Snow Lodge palette. I won't be buying this. I'm not even putting it on the wish list. And let me tell you why. Because 
at first glance, this looks like something I might like. It's got greens, it's got blues. I love a good blue and green. And then it has some warm tones to round it out. And it's especially those warm tones that I'm, that's going to be the reason why I'm not buying this. Where this palette on its own looks very pretty, I own two other palettes from this brand. I have the Iceland Fire and Ice, and I have the um, Haunted Europe palette that they did, that they came out with in the fall time. And I just feel that especially the Land of Fire and Ice Iceland palette, that there are quite a lot of similarities between the color stories, and especially in the warm tones, I feel that those look just very similar to some of the other things that they've done in other palettes I already own, which is why this is not gonna go onto the wish list. Um, maybe if I absolutely adore and fall in love with the quality of the other two palettes, because I haven't put those on my face yet, um, then I might be interested in this because I wasn't a huge fan of their Tokyo Harajuku formula. So I, would, I bought the other two to sort of give the brand another try. But with this, I'm like, I think I have this. I think that, for instance, if I take my Blueberry Muffin and my Passion in Paris from BH, that I can get a similar vibe. Like, I've got those berries and those blue tones in my Passion in Paris, and then, like, I have this, I can, I can do this look. I don't need this. I really, really don't. Um, then for the top five, and I'm going to be very short and sweet here, uh, the first thing I wanted to mention is the Viseart, uh, Pretty Pro Paris Etoile. If you saw my eyeshadow palette haul that I filmed at the end of 2021, you know that I already bought this. So I already own this palette, but I wanted to give it another mention here because it's definitely a standout eyeshadow palette release for me in that has come out in like the past like two or three months. Um, so I wanted to give it another mention here. I just love how you get this like darker teal in there. Uh, you get some gray tones, you get some plummy tones, you get some taupey champagne leaning neutrals. And I really felt that it was a very nice eight pan that brought a lot of different things together. Um, so I haven't tried that on my face yet. So that's why it's still new enough for me to be mentioning it in a video like this. Um, a thing you will be seeing in this video later on is the new highlighter release from Kaleidos. They came out with another multi-chrome highlighter. Um, this is the, their Space Age Gifted Highlighter. And where the Space Age Prophecy Highlighter had more like orange and green to it, this is more like purple magenta pink leaning. So I feel it's more cool toned, which is why I think it's going to be better for me because the other one was just a little bit too warm toned for it to really look nice on me. Again, not something I've put on my face yet, but it's coming up in a minute. Um, Fenty seems to be doing a new highlighter as well, but I haven't seen an update on this yet. So I don't know what this is going to be called. But yeah, Fenty Beauty is coming out with a new highlighter. This was posted halfway through December and I haven't really seen any updates on it. So I don't know whether this is coming, when this is coming, what it's called. I'm just not entirely sure. And then something that I'm very excited for actually is the new Charlotte Tilbury foundation. This is their beautiful skin foundation. And it seems to be marketed as a medium coverage foundation with skincare properties. And I love that kind of thing in the winter time. Uh, it comes in 30 shades and I just wanna to get to a store to get shade matched before I buy this. Uh, by the time I'm filming this, I haven't been able to do that yet. Stores are open again. Um, but with Charlotte Tilbury, especially because the line leans quite warm toned, I prefer to go in store before I buy a uh, like a complexion product like this. Um, and then I can, for instance, like I love the light wonder that I have. So I know what shade I am in that. And then I can compare that shade to the shades of this line to see if I if I can find my match. So I first need to be matched before I can try this. Uh, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I might be able to. And then finally, what I'm going to, what again, I'm going to be showing you this in a minute, um, the Blend Bunny Cosmetics Dollhouse Palette. This just looks like it's going to be cool toned heaven. And that's why I placed myself in order with Blend Bunny. And I actually already have the palette here. So let me segue into the, um, into the section where I'm gonna show you what I actually bought. And the thing that I bought that I can't show you yet because it's not going to arrive until April are some Terra Moon shadows. So I just filmed my entire single shadow collection video in case you would like to see, I can link that down below. 
and I still have a bit of space in my multi-chrome palette so I wanted to sort of round it out with some Terra Moon shadows because I've heard they're really good multi-chromes and I've never tried Terra Moons before and they did their New Year's sale um, when this video goes up I think it may still be on for like a few days or it's just finished um, so I picked up a few of their shades using the code that was active during that sale um, but some of the shades I'm, I want to get are not available until 15th of March because a lot of their multi-chromes sell out like hotcakes um, so that's why I'm gonna have to be very patient it should restock around the 15th since Terra Moons is located in the US it could take up to another four to six weeks until I actually have these shades in my possession so I can't show you anything there yet but I mean it's only six shades it's not like it's like I didn't I didn't go all out or something like that. I didn't buy like a palette filled with Terra Moons just a couple two of their regular shimmers two of their like duochrome kind of shades and then like two of their multi-chromes it was like I want to try an array of things that they offer um so yeah that's going to hopefully arrive sometime later this spring then I already mentioned buying the Space, Space Age Gifted Highlighter from Kaleido so this already arrived and this highlighter I mean uh, can I swatch this for you I mean it looks really pretty I think that the other one was indeed a little bit too warm toned for me uh, and this looks like it's going to work so much better in terms of like a multi-chrome highlighter that can actually work on my skin tone because that was my issue with the other one it was a little bit too dark and something that I saw popping up in quite a few people's videos as like favorite lip products that they tried all year were some of the Kaleidos what are these called again the cloud play lip clays or something like that they've got a very complicated name and Kaleidos actually does a deal and I had hoped to snatch these up for Black Friday but then they said that their um, uh, their sets were not part of their sale which I understand because you already get a discount on these so I was like oh I don't need to buy it now I'm just going to um, do this later so what you get is if you buy a set you can either buy the set that, that these came in but you can also pick from the 16 shades available and then build your own little set so I built two uh, with all of the shades that I liked so I built myself like um, a reddish pink sort of set with some of the shades like you can tell from like the color of the tube that it's from different collections and then I put that in the red tin and then in the blue tin I got the crazy shades because this line comes with a uh, like a teal and a black and like an, a really intense purple and also like an icy gray toned lavender and I just wanted to try these to see if these look like like whether they look good on me I've tried navy blue liquid lipstick in the past and I actually quite like it on myself I should pop it on sometime again for a video it will be fun to do that um, but yeah I've got lots of like I like trying crazy lip shades and this I thought was a great way to get a feel for the formula and to see what's going on I didn't get any of the nudes because they are liquid lipsticks and I never wear a nude liquid lipstick so that's why those aren't going to be present I hope to try these out in the next couple of weeks and I hope to be doing a full-on lip swatch video for this with this entire like all of these shades that I have in like the next couple of months it's going to be a while I think I've got it planned now for either April or May to do that video uh, so yeah that's content that I hope to do later on and then I got some more lipsticks and it was this was quite a bougie purchase um, but I got myself some more Gucci lipsticks I bought one of their Voile lipsticks over the summertime and I fell in love it's one of my favorite new favorite lipsticks so I wanted to try their mattes as well as their satin so I got four of their shades to try it out so I'm gonna try and buy a few more of these in the next couple of months so that I have two of each of the different formulas that they have um, and then uh, I will have eight of these and then I think I could do another lip swatch video for you so these are definitely going to come up I have in the satin I have Mildred Rosewood and love for breakfast uh, I think this yeah this is love for breakfast look at how bright that is it's so much fun I already put these on and they are intense they're insane and then from the mattes I have Peggy taupe which is not a taupe but seems to be the perfect mauve tone matte lipstick so for all of my mauve lip 
people. Try that. And then I always like trying a classic red, and this apparently is number 25, which is their classic Gucci red. So if you see Gucci using red in their fashion, this is the shade they tend to go for, apparently. So those I've tried. And then something I just took pictures of right before I sat down to film this video is my Blend Bunny order. So um, whether I got just the dollhouse or also the search palette in terms of shipping, it didn't really make much of a difference. So that's why I got both because I think shipping was like quite expensive to get it to the Netherlands. Um, and um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I got the most out of that order. So this is what the dollhouse looks like. I think it looks really pretty. It's very, very cool tone because save for this row, everything is cool, which I love. I love a cool tone neutral. The only thing that I've seen in real life is that I don't understand. I would have swapped this shade with that, like put this one over here, because this is like an icy lavender, and then make this a taupe shimmer. That's what I would have done to make it more neutral. I don't understand that blue. Um, but other than that, it works really well. And then a palette that a lot of people have been raving about is the Surge. So that palette I would like to try as well, I thought. Because yes, it's colorful and it's sort of like rainbow, but it's quite grungy. And then it's got neons and I don't really have any neons in my collection. It only has one row of shimmers. Don't love that. But because you get this entire array, you can very easily mix and match this. And I, I could just see myself like doing a look, like a monochromatic look with each row to try out every single row in this palette. I just thought it was fun. And I really like how dark and saturated these are. But even on my fair skin, when I, when I swatch them, they still look distinct. Like they didn't look all black on me, which is what I was afraid of. But they actually look like the color that they are in the palette, which is good, I thought. And then lastly in this video, the last section are the brands that I would like to try in 2022. We're already like about a month underway, of course. So that means that we are like, I'm a little bit behind, but that's okay. I'm pretty sure. Um, so what did I want to try in 2021? Did I do that? Natasha Denona cheek products, check. M Cosmetics, check. More Cleona stained glass, check. Giorgio Armani, check. More Milk Makeup, check. Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm, check. And the thing I put in that list was the RMS Beauty something. I didn't try RMS Beauty yet. I'm still sort of thinking that I might want to try their Living Luminizer, but I've swatched it in store over the summertime because I was in Paris and they had uh, a tester at Galerie Lafayette and it seemed very sticky. So I'm not sure if the tester was just really old um, because it was like an open pot and it's like a cream texture. So I'm not sure if that's a good enough representation of what that product can do. So yeah, that's one that's sort of still in the back of my ha uh, in the back of my head. Like for years, that's a product that's sort of been like going on and off the wish list. Haven't tried it yet. But what are new brands that I would like to try? One of the brands that I put on this list at the end of December was Blend Buddy. So check, I already bought them. I'm gonna try them out. I haven't tried it yet. I just swatched it, so haven't tried it yet. I would like to get myself to London sometime this year for three reasons. Trini London, Victoria Beckham, and Glossier has opened a store in London, I heard. So all three of these brands have stores or counters nowhere else in Europe apart from London. So that's why I would like to make my way across the pond for the first time in three years and, you know, get myself across the channel and go to London again. That would be fun. So yeah, Trini London is a brand I would love to try. Um, I think her cream shadows are going to be something I'm really going to enjoy. Uh, Victoria Beckham, like her Instagram ads keep popping up on my feed and I just, I want one of the eyeliners, one of those like, Potted Shadows looks really, really stunning as well. Again, I just, it's a very expensive brand, so I'll probably just buy like one or two things, but it's definitely a brand I would like to try. Possibly some more like, well, not K-beauty, but like natural beauty and Chinese brands. So I like to try Dear Dahlia. Aether Beauty seems to be doing international shipping. 
Zishi is a brand that I've already sort of like looked into, like what products would I like to try? Kosas is a brand that I keep hearing lots of great things about, especially in terms of like powder, bronzer, and concealer. Um, so that's not like necessarily palette related. Um, Adept Cosmetics I would like to try, but they're very difficult and very expensive to buy from, so not sure whether I'll be able to make that. And Kylove Beauty, which is the new name for Musee Beauty. However, they've stopped shipping internationally, so due to lots of problems with postal services and stuff. So I hope they're going to bring back international shipping or not. I'm going to have to, you know, try and use a shipping company for the very first time to see if I can get my hands on those products. So yeah, those are the brands I would like to try. I will update you on the things I have bought in February when I do my February new makeup releases. I'm, I'm probably going to wait a little bit longer. I'm now posting this like at the tail end of January um, because I was like, I haven't done one of these for a while so it doesn't matter if it's like not in February, you know what I mean? I was like, I can just like situate it at the end. Um, but the next one is probably going to be like the first week of March. That's when I hope to be able to do it. I usually film like post these things on a Sunday um, and let me know if this is like a format that you enjoy. I really would like to hear a little bit of feedback, this top five, bottom five style, showing you what I actually got and what is on the wish list as well. So let me know what's on your wish list, what you would like to try or what is a, a, a makeup release that stands out to you. I would very much love to know. So leave a comment down below. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I am going to try my best to do three videos a week again for you. So let's hope we can stick to that. And for now, I would like to wish you a very pleasant day. Take care, everybody, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.